Hi, this is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Three Oysters Red Wine. I'll do a writing sample with red wine on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper using a variety of pens and nib sizes, ranging from a Pilot Extra Fine to a 1.5 stub nib. I'll take a look at some writing samples that I did earlier on other types of paper. I'll compare Three Oysters Red Wine to other similar inks from my collection. And finally, I'll take a look at the results of my water resistance test. Writing with Three Oysters Red Wine using a glass dip nib was very enjoyable. It came off the nib nice and wet, but also crisp and uniform, so the writing was very pleasant and looks really good. The swatch that I made with tweezers was nice and crisp and surprisingly uniform. The drip at the end of the swatch doesn't have any noticeable sheen, but there's a slight amount of dark halo, and that halo is somewhat noticeable in the writing, and you can kind of see it in the scribble up here. It gives the writing some nice character. I'm going to begin with my Pilot Kakuno. It has a stainless steel extra fine nib. Red wine in this extra fine nib is very pleasant. It was felt really smooth and the writing is very legible and crisp. Very nice. I'm going to go ahead and put that this was actually pretty smooth. Next, I've got a Pilot Legno. It has a 14 karat fine nib. Once again, I, this is an example of a Pilot Gold Nib that has a, a dry upstroke, but it felt nice and smooth in this writing and decently wet, very pleasant. Next, I'll be writing with a Pilot Explorer. It has a stainless steel medium nib. You can see that this stainless steel nib is just maybe slightly drier than this gold fine nib, and I could feel that on the paper. It felt smooth, but I felt just a, a bit more drag, and I'm going to go ahead and make a note of that. I wouldn't hardly even classify it as feedback, just felt almost slightly rubbery on the page, and that's not entirely unpleasant. It might might be unpleasant for people who tend to write a bit faster because, I don't know, it's almost like I feel like I have to slow down for the feed to keep up, though I'm going to, yeah, the feed doesn't have any trouble keeping up. So that's just something in my head. It just doesn't feel as as wet. I can tell that it doesn't feel as wet, but I don't really see any difference in how the ink looks between these two. So, yeah, the steel medium nib does fine with this. Next, I'll be writing with a Pilot Grants. It has a 14 karat medium nib.
On these small grids, I feel a bit cramped with this 14 karat medium nib. It's fairly wet. Um, in contrast to this steel medium nib, I feel like I need to write faster to uh, keep that ink from pulling up quite as much, but it's very smooth. And I enjoy this nib when writing on like my rhodia paper that has a larger ruling. This is very smooth and very pleasant. Next, I'll be writing with a fooling win 017. I've replaced the stock nib with a Nemesign 0.6 stub nib. Okay, I've had trouble with this Nemesign nib on this fully win when I do dip tests. Now, I haven't noticed any trouble when I have a converter inked up. I haven't experienced this problem, so I'm not sure exactly what the issue is if, like the cap, if there's just too much area up here and the nib dries out, but I've noticed this a couple different times whenever I'm doing ink tests, so I'm going to go ahead and dip this again and do my writing sample. Now, this is quite a bit wetter than I remember it writing when I have a converter inked up. So, I'm just going to put a question mark beside this. I like the shape of this nib, and I like the line that it puts down. But using it for dip testing has just not been working out here lately. Next, I'll be writing with a Caveco Lily Put. It has a stainless steel broad nib. Mm, even my Caveco hard started a little bit up here. Very pleasant. Just a hint of chalkiness. Um, don't really have a lot of room to write it. I'll just make a note that this was very pleasant. Just a hint of chalkiness, and I can I can really hear the nib on the paper, but it's it's still pretty smooth. And finally, I'll be writing with my Jinhao X750. It has a 1.5 stainless steel stub nib. That just felt very smooth and very luxurious. While this dries, we can take a look at some of the other writing samples. Again, the glass dip nib was very enjoyable to write with. The lines are nice and crisp and uniform, and it just felt very nice to write with it. The swatch that I made with tweezers, look how uniform the color is. Just a little bit of a drip here at the end with a little bit of halo, no sheen. The stub nib felt very velvety and luxurious. The Caveco felt very chalky. The Nemesign felt a little dry. Again, I noted that I felt like with this nib that I had to write slower. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. In fact, let's check that and see. We'll see if this Nemesign is, has dried up. Still writing pretty wet, Nemesign. No, I feel that drag on the paper, even though it's writing wet like this. And no trouble with the feed keeping up. It's just the drag that I'm feeling on the paper, just like with the Pilot Steel nib. But no trouble with it keeping up. The Pilot Grants was nice and smooth, very wet. You can see how much 
darker it is than the others. The Pilot Explore, smooth. Everything just felt really nice. When I did the first writing sample with the 1.5 stub nib, I didn't get that unpleasant feeling of the ink spreading as I was writing, and I was really pleased with that. But I noticed after the writing sample set for just a little bit, it did spread a little bit, and so it doesn't look much different than any other writing sample that I do with that wide nib. But it just felt nicer as I wrote. Here, the Nemesign, as I was writing, I was going to write, have to write slower, but then the ink just gave out. Again, I don't have that trouble whenever I have the converter on it. I've never had that problem before. This is, just has something to do with the dip test. Maybe it's the way the feed reacts with the ink. I'm, I'm not sure. Everything felt nice except for, obviously, the Pilot Grant, since it's such a wet writer. It just felt too wet on this copy paper. The Kakuno had a little bit of feedback, but it was still nice. Had a little bit of bleed through. Now, this is thicker than normal copy paper, so on just normal copy paper, this would be likely to come through. But overall, for most of the nibs, the writing experience was fairly pleasant. Before I get started with the ink comparisons of similar inks, I just want to mention that I had high expectations for this ink because I've tried a few different Three Oysters inks and I've always had a very good experience. They've always been very well behaved and very pleasant to write with and especially something like Three Oysters Bucansen, which is a very pale ink. Those Normally, those inks are tend to be less pleasant to write with for me. Sometimes they feel dry. Sometimes they're just too pale. But this was a nice, pleasant-looking pale ink that I just enjoyed in every nib. So I had high expectations for this ink as well. Monteverde Rose Noir and Caveco Summer Purple were the closest matches as I was going through my collection. Rose Noir has pretty much no water resistance, which kind of surprised me because that noir in the name, I expected there to be a little bit of black or gray. But Caveco Summer Purple has some a nice water-resistant component, and you'll see in just a moment, so did Three Oysters Red Wine. And if you compare the writing, they look very similar. Caveco Summer Purple looks like it would have more shading, but in the writing, they still look very similar. Like if you look at the Caveco Broad and the Stub. Rose Noir, the writing is noticeably lighter. If you can compare these bottom two, you can really see it. The entire time I was doing my writing samples, I was thinking, this ink is going to be very similar to Yamabudo. But it turns out that Yamabudo, Sailor Mano Akebi, and Erban Larme de Cassis are all very similar, but they look much more pink than Three Oysters Red Wine. Like I mentioned earlier, Red Wine has a nice water-resistant component. I did this writing sample on a little piece of rhodia paper. I let the ink dry for a little bit and then I submerged it in water for 10 minutes and you have a nice legible gray or a little bit of black left over. Okay, let's take a look at the writing sample that I did on Tomoe River paper. Now this just occurred to me, the problems that I'm having with this Nemesign nib could have something to do with the fact that it's summertime. I do these writing tests in an upstairs room that gets fairly hot throughout the day. I don't know. That might have something to do with it. Let's see. No bleed through, even in the heaviest bits of writing and the swatch here. And not too bad on the show through either. This was just a pleasant ink. Everything felt really nice. Any remotely negative comments like the the drag that I felt on this Pilot Explorer are only because all the other nibs were so smooth. 
this is a nice ink. So I think, how many Three Oysters inks have I tried? I think this is the fifth one, and I'm five for five. They've all been very nice, very pleasant to work with. All right, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.